Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about Venn diagrams and tree diagrams. So you've probably done them in previous years, but if it's been a long time, can't remember them, this, this is some revision, a few examples to get you going again, as well as relating it back to some previous uh, concepts we've covered, and also leading on to some further applications that we'll do later down the track. So, to begin, we'll talk about some Venn diagrams. So here's the question. We have 20 kids in a class. So 14 do maths, 6 do history, and 3 do both. So, with Venn diagrams, and also tree diagrams, they're basically visual representations. And in relation to probability, we can use them for a visual representation for problems, and also for probability. So, we're going to put this question basically onto this Venn diagram. So there are these circles. Now, I'll label one of them math, and one of them history. Now, what this box contains is, if you remember before, this symbol is the set or the sample space. So this basically represents the 20 kids in the class. So it equals 20. Now, that, yeah, so the set. Then we have the math. So 14 do math, 6 do history, and 3 do both. So with the math, we have 14 encompassing that area. With history, 6 encompassing this area, and 3 do both. So we'll write, th we'll write 3 there, and that represents for 3 students that are in both subsets. Therefore, maths, there's 11, just doing 14 minus 3, as the entire blue, both of them have to add up to 14. And for history, you do the same thing, and you get 3 there as well. Now, there are 20 kids. And if you add those up, there's 11 plus 3 plus 3, so that's 17. So that means there are three kids that neither do maths or history. But they're still part of the set. As we've said, the set is a class. So the class relates to the set or the sample space. Now, just a quick thing. With the both, it encompasses two subsets. So what we can say is that if you can write this mathematically, you could write maths intersection history and that would be those three kids so in a Venn diagram when you when if we put probabilities there you could do the same thing that the probability of a intersection B would also be represented by that middle section in between these two values Now another key concept of Venn diagrams is I'll just give us some space. You could uh, they could ask for sort of how many kids don't do maths. So don't do maths. How many students? Now you could say there are 14 kids, so you would say 6 don't, because 3 only do history, and 3 neither do history or maths. So this area for the don't do maths, if we graphically show it, is all this area outside, as well as the only history section. So it is everywhere apart from inside the blue. Now, mathematically, we can say don't do maths rather than saying don't do blah, x, or a or not included in a. We can just write maths dash. Or seeing that we're representing maths as m, we could just write it as m dash. So this dash up here is important and it means uh, not included or not. So you could also have h, which is h dash, so that would be everybody that's not included in history. And I th believe I mentioned this before, but you can also just see it graphically. So h dash would be everywhere that's not in the green. Yeah, so Venn diagrams, you're not going to be directly assessed upon them typically. However, they're good as ways to have a worded complicated equation and put it into a graphical form that you can manipulate. Now, another rule that I mentioned before is the probability 
of A union B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. Now you should logically think why is that the case? But you can also see on a Venn diagram. If we have A here and if we have B here let's draw it a bit better and B there A union B is all this area and all this area. Basically all the area within these two circles. So when you have so probability of A is all is shown by this area here. And then when you have add the probability of B, you add all this area as well. And so you should see straight away that I've just double lapped in the intersection because this intersection has been accounted for for B as well as for A. So the union is both these areas but only the intersection once. But the probability of A and the probability of B they've been encompassed they've encompassed this intersection twice which would make sense seeing as the, they, it's an intersection so they're both included in both values. That's why we have to minus the probability of the intersection. So if you have A and if you have B you add the probability of A, add the probability of B, intersection is included twice, we minus it once, and that's how we get the union. So now moving on to tree diagrams. We'll use an example such as the weather. It's a good way to say that, let's say on, this is Monday, the chance of it raining, so R, so we'll say rain, is 0 0.2. So remember that means 20%. The chance of it not raining, 0 0.8. But when it rains one day, it's much more likely to rain the next day. So we could say 0 0.4 chance of it raining. And not raining is 0 0.6. Then if it doesn't rain, it's the same probability. 0 0.2 for rain, not rain, 0 0.8. And I'm assuming it didn't rain on Sunday. So what we can do with this Venn diagram is we can represent these probabilities. Then we could do questions such as what is the probability it rains on both days? So both on Monday and Tuesday. So all we do is we get 0 0.2 times 0 0.4. Now that is the same as 2 on 10 times 4 on 10 which equals 8 on 100 which you can write down as a decimal as 0 0.08. But normally you'd have a calculator to do that. All you can do is fractions, you could have done that as 1 on 5, 2 on 5, simplified it and you'd get the same answer. So 0 0.08. So, what you can do in a Venn diagram is to work out the probability of an event occurring. So you can get one of the events and then times it, the probability of that event on the particular day or the particular outcome firstly, and then times it by the other and work it out. So there are four different outcomes, raining on Monday and Tuesday, raining on Monday but not Tuesday, and the, Venn, the tree diagram, sorry, not the Venn diagram, allows you to see all the dis different possibilities and work out the different probabilities. But for tree diagrams, we'll talk about it more when we are calculating other probabilities laid down the track. But it's important to understand when tree diagrams are basically just representing different outcomes. They don't necessarily also have to be two. You could write down anything. And even if not in probability, they're a good skill to have because they're good at representing different scenarios such as like yes, no, and then you could have those two different outcomes. If you're doing surveys, you can draw a tree diagram to ask the different questions. So lots of different applications. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.